Okay, so now that I've shown you my technique in a couple of different ways, what I'm gonna do is work on this section right here, and I'm gonna insert the photo, the actual photo into the video so you can see how blended all of this is. You can see how separated the tulips are within themselves. So I've already done these leaves down here. And once they dry, you can kind of look at them and decide, do I need to come back? Do I need to do more blending within those sections? I haven't done that one yet, but I've done this part here. What I'm using is my photo as my guide. And my guide is telling me these items are blurred. This is blurred. You know, this is blurred. But this stem was super crisp. So I actually took my flat brush, my shader brush in size six, and I went in and did a distinctive line on the edge. Now, I only did that to sharpen it a little bit. I may go back later a little bit more to make it stand out more. I have not blended this section here yet. And I'm not gonna show you this entire piece blended, but I did wanna show you sections and how I'm doing certain sections. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I've already got my paints here. I've got three different red paints, which are the same colors as these here. This is its outside edge right here. And then it kind of gets lost up in here. So we're gonna work on blurring this part of this tulip in through here, but I'm not gonna do this line. I need this line to stay crisp because that is the defined edge of that outside tulip. So these are things that I'm not trying to complicate what you're doing, but I want you to just kind of use your eyes and just look and say, that doesn't feel right. Let me you know look at the reference picture and I'm not using this reference picture really as much because it is the such wrong colors, but it does help me a little bit to see which edges should be defined. But when I wanna see which edges need to be blurred, I'm actually going on to the picture that I saved into my phone when I placed the order for this piece. And I'm looking at it and I'm going back and forth and I'm blurring the sections that are blurred in that picture. Okay, all right, let's just go ahead and get started. So I've shown you this technique a lot of times, the one stroke method to blending um, is what I'm calling it. And I have to give Donna Dewberry credit every time I say that because I wanna make sure everyone knows this was nothing I came up with. It's just so genius though. So I'm scooping out my corner and I've got a lot there. I'm dipping my corner, I want it on both sides. So I'm just gonna dip the corner in the dark red, which is gonna be number 15. I'm dipping it into this color, which is number 18 on both sides. I'm gonna blend it together just like that. And then I'm going in and because this 18 is here, 15 is here, I'm making sure I've got those colors where they need to be. And because it's gonna get a little tight through there, I'm just gonna start up here. And I'm gonna kind of stroke back and forth over that line using that gradation of color. So I'm gonna let that dry because it's, this one's gonna take some work. But in the meantime, I'm gonna to move to a different section of that same tulip. I've cleaned my brush. I'm straightening out my bristles so they're good and flat. And then I'm gonna do this part while I'm waiting for that to dry. So this is number 20 and that's number 15. So let's go in, I'm gonna put 20 on the right side of my brush, 15 on the left, front and back. Make sure we've got it on there. Okay. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the back of this brush and we're gonna go in the opposite direction and I'm gonna smooth out some of that color. And then when this dries, I can kind of go back in and take number 15 and deepen it up just by itself. And then I can take number 18 because this needs another layer anyway, because it's got that gel look to it that's kind of strokey. And I can deepen that up. But until I get rid of this harsh line, I don't want to do that yet. So let's go in with a smaller shader brush. And this one's really smaller. This is number two. Really a four would be ideal, I think, um, for up in this area. But we're just gonna we're just gonna make it work. Tiny bit, tiny bit. All right, let's see what we got here. And let's just smooth this edge over here. Now I'm gonna take, even though there's a little paint on here, I'm just gonna take this number 18 and I'm gonna fill in some of this color on the outside away from where I've been painting the um, blended section. I'm just going ahead and using that paint, covering that up, and that's gonna give me a nice solid section of 18. You can see as this is drying, I can still see this line between those two colors. And that's gonna happen because these colors are kind of translucent each of them have, don't have a lot of um, opacity. So it's gonna happen that way, but it's okay. And I'm just gonna keep working on it. So I'm gonna go back and get my number six brush, get some more 18. I was tested today for COVID. I've been so sick and losing my voice. But finally, I was like, enough people said, seriously, you need to do something to find out what's going on. So I got a hold of my doctor and they wanted me to they wanted me to go get tested. So I did. I don't have results, but he would explain why I feel so bad. So let's go back over this section where that line is and let's see if we can soften it up. Now what we can do here is if we find that that one stroke method isn't really eliminating it, let's do a different method. Let's go in with the flat shader brush dipped a little bit into 18 and let's go kind of just zigzaggy over that line a little bit. So I use all kind of techniques for blending. I do love the one stroke method. In most cases, I'm noticing I'm getting the best results with it. Um, but there are times that other methods do work. So I definitely want you to learn all of them. And guys, just play. I mean, if it doesn't work out right, what do you need to do? You just take a coat, a layer of the original color and go over the top and you're fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna take number 15, which is this darker burgundy, like deep color here, and I'm just gonna blend it over the top with 18 while it's still wet. I'm just kind of working it in. This is gonna be a little harder to, to blend only because of this translucent color. All right, well, let's go here and get some 15, and I'm actually gonna just blend these two colors together completely, like just to make one color. And let's see if that helps going over this line. Be a little careful up here. I'm still loading the brush the same as I would in the one stroke method, but then I'm just taking it over and blending it completely together. And that does seem to help a lot. Because I can see this line where it's mixed, I'm gonna go in, I'm leaving my brush kind of dirty like it is. I'm taking a little bit of 15 and I'm gonna go over 15, a little bit more, just more 15. And let's go over and kind of fill in some of this section with the actual 15. 
All right, we're gonna overlap 20. And let's get a little bit more 20 and 15. Just taking the corner of number 20 part of the brush and blending it down just so it kind of just gradiates out. Let's do the same thing with 15 up here so it just blends out. Look how soft and pretty that is. Now I know that seems like it took a lot of time. You guys, blending is an optional thing. It is something that you can do if you want to. It is not something that you have to do. For those of you who have an artistic background, it's gonna just be second nature for you to want to do that. You're gonna to wanna to blend it. For those who are new to all of this, don't overwhelm yourself. It is not worth it. This is a hobby, like I've said a million times, that you need to enjoy, and that is why you're doing it. So don't let it stress you out. Now you see how I'm taking all of these different techniques and I'm using them together, and whatever works in each section is what I'm doing. So there's no rules to this. Let's do this part right here. I want, it's so addictive. Once you get started blending, then you can't stop. And then you're like, I've spent how much time on this basic beginner uh, paint by number? Like this paint by number should really honestly be considered a beginner one because it's got such a huge openings. But yet I'm gonna take something that is super simple <laughs> and make it into super complicated. <laughs> because that's just how I roll. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why I do that, but it will be gorgeous when I'm done, right? All right, let's do a little bit more in here with 18 and, and 15. And, and then we're gonna leave this part of this alone. As if, right? to consider I'm going to be blending this into this here in a second but let's check our um, picture again because if these petals let's say this is a separate petal right it would blend in, in, in itself but it's not going to necessarily blend into this part here so again that reference picture is really helpful now my phone is what I'm using to video to record so i can't really look at it right now and go yeah i need to blur leave this alone this line and blur this and blur that but not you know so what i'll do is i'll switch over to up here since i know i need to blur this blend this and we'll go we'll do this part and then this is going to be it for this video i've looked at the picture enough to see that this creamy color and this pink color do blend in together, and this right over here. So let's work on that, this section. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna make sure that the sky is finished so I can just kind of say I'm done with that. When we can go in with a larger brush. Let's try the bigger brush so you can really see what I'm doing again. I'm gonna get it wet, but I'm wiping off all the excess water. Since I'm gonna start with this one where the cream is on the my right, pink is on my left, let's go this way. And then I'm gonna clean it up. tip of the brush with the number two and blend it in and the number four and blend it out making sure it's I'm making sure it's um, smooth let's go ahead and do this little section here I'm just flipping the brush over and smooth that out a little bit better so I don't get any more of this paint on there. And I'm 
There we go. Now here I've got some like some number two that looks too harsh right there. All I'm going to do is take a little bit of number four and just kind of take it back in. I'm not going straight over the top of it, but I'm just kind of filling in a little bit with number four. And here we go. This I have to do this section. I almost didn't see that. Let's go in with a smaller brush. Let's take some of that just solid number two. I mean number four and get over that number. Hide that a little better. And look how blended that is, you guys. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm loving that technique, you guys. I hope you guys love it too, and I hope you'll try it and not be intimidated by it. First of all, you can see how blended the sky is, and it's still gonna dry. This is still drying right now, and it won't look so splotchy once it's dry. But you can see how softly blended that is back there. And then here are our tulip petals and how beautiful those blended together. Now you can continue, once it's dry, you can kind of see what you need to work on. And I'll continue to do these tulips in here. One of these days in about 100 years, I might actually finish blending all of this. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna stop for now because I could go on and on and this video would be 100 hours. Um, but this looks so pretty now. Like it just, in person, it looks so much prettier now that it's blended. So I hope you guys will try these techniques. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you find them easy and you don't find them intimidating. These are also blended. You can tell where I did zigzag and blur and where, where I did one stroke. It's a little cleaner when you do one stroke. Um, but anyway, thank you guys as always for being so good to me and so sweet on the group. And y'all have been so patient with me while I've been trying to get these videos recorded now that I've been sick for so long, praying that it's not COVID. Uh, but either way, I hope this was helpful. You guys don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, go join the group. And I will see you back soon with another video. I have lots of ideas for videos on the horizon here. So if I can just get start feeling better, I can get them knocked out for you. Keep watching. Don't forget to follow with the notification bell so it can let you know when there's new videos. All right, you guys stay safe out there. See you soon.